and welcome to the first episode of EM Report. We are here to guide you through all the EU Masters action and highlight the stars of tomorrow. So let's take a look at what happened in week one. After Schalke ended Excel's playoff half twice in the LEC, their NCL counterparts BTXL had a chance at revenge. However, Schalke Evolution danced to victory with a strong performance. Elsewhere, it was a battle of the two biggest fan groups in the EU Masters. The BTS fans were behind Betis, but it turns out even Shelly is part of Carmen Cobb's blue wall, who ultimately came out on top. But Shelly, Shelly's too busy counting minions on the back end of this. They're not even going to be able to get the charge off of this just yet. She's too concerned with the minions. Oh, this is awful. Then day two was the day of upset. Sopops came back from an 8k goal deficit thanks to Spooky's Elder Steel to take down Misfits Premier. And Dominant took revenge on Kick for banning his Garen jungle by spearheading an orthosis to victory with a superb Xin Sao performance. Following that on day three, Ego Rogue and Misfits Premier clashed in a game that had it all. The man formerly known as Sankox stole Baron as Orianna. Sentus landed a ridiculous Zoe snipe. Red buff fought back against the junglers. And to wrap it up, Woolite backdoored his former team to give Misfits a much needed win. Shemegracebo and Jack Troll gets the knock up. Lucker and Cress will finally be there, but Woolite's ending the game. With Betis and G2 Ugly bottom of their group, you can have emerged as Spain's last hope on day four with an important win against Mouse Esports. And finally, Burning International Gaming appropriately showed up big. Not even Dominant's Xin Sao performance could stop Kedwis Tristana as he finished with a monstrous KDA of 13, 2 and 3. Now you're caught up on the drama, so let's celebrate our competitors' efforts and show you the best place from the tournament so far. Carmin Corp's Targamas stole his bot lane's partner's pentakill as Xmati picked up a quadra kill versus Krim Real Betis. Adam jumps straight in on top of the Zion. He is dead. Everyone falling down. That's all you need. A triple kill here for the side of Xmati. Top it off with a quadra. Next from the GGL, Dominant sets crew the meta and Dove Kiki Sports Club for a triple kill on his Xinsao. Under the tower he goes, the Crescent Strike to finish him all off, dashes under, and Dominant shield just Lips. about gets away with it. Somehow a North Assist win everything. And finally, we have a massive four-man shockwave from Illuminar Gaming's Shayek, which makes Mako easy pickings for Paparabachi's fed Udir. Slumped into the wall, Paparabachi going in, trying to kill. Shockwave on to four! Durki chased on down, Paparabachi to finish that one off as his 19th kill of the game or something. Darkrai alone in the world and the song can't save you now. So before we end things, let's take a quick look at the groups. In Group A, Kik Neosurf had had a disastrous 0-3 start, while Greece and Narcissus and Italy's makers chased Berlin International Gaming. Meanwhile, in Group B, it's all up to play for Misfits Premier, Ego Rogue and Sup Up Esports, all tied for first. UCAM Esports Club are one of the only undefeated teams remaining, while Illuminar Gaming has the advantage over Mouse Esports. And in our Group of Death, Carmin Corp are flying with a 3-0 start, while BTXL, Schalke Evolution and Cream Real Betis are all tied for second. Let us know who you think will come out on top in week two. There is so much more EU Masters action to look forward to. Make sure you don't miss it. All right, strap in for the last game of Group B, or potentially not. Let's be real. If a Go Rogue find the win here, they'll go into a tiebreaker game after this one versus Sup Up. If G2 Arctic win, they 
knock out a go rogue as they were taken out in the previous game so a lot to play for here still for a go rogue for g2r tick and for spain it's it's a pride banner it's don't have a completely horrible uh, experience with g2r tick over in group b and remember g2r tick are a team who absolutely stomped through the play-in stages of the european masters so let's see if we can see some of that life from them but you know I, I want tiebreakers. I'll be honest with you guys at home. I know you want it as well, Dan. I love I love all this action. I mean, I love the extra game, of course, but I also feel like it gives Sup Up a chance to take on a Go Rogue. And if they win, then they can comfortably say that, like, yeah, we definitely deserve this. I mean, I still think, obviously, they will if they go through, but I'd love to see the extra game so we get that final battle for that second spot in the group. Go Rogue, not had flawless performances throughout there's been some messy moments but there's also been some really solid games where they've looked pretty dominant and i mean the last matchup against each arctic pretty crushing all in all yeah uh i mean a last matchup for g2 it was just so horrible it's obviously, you know, for G2, it's a matter of putting that, that in the past. That, that game is now done. It's just go, all right, we need to mental reset. We've got a final game. This is our last game of the European Masters. Let's show what we're made of. Because remember what, if anything, the European Masters is a showcase of all the up-and-coming talent here in the European Regional Leagues. And, like, our final, our, just our LEC finals just gone with 7 out of 10 players, all ex-EU Masters players. So... You know, G2 Arctic, even though it hasn't been a great group stage for them, have a good showing. Come in, come in with some great games, and then you can go into next season and hopefully re-qualify and look even better next time around. And you got to think as well for a go rogue. I mean, you look at Trimby, who is their support and is obviously now playing on the main roster in the finals. You look at the fact that out of their roster who won EU Masters, four out of five of the players went to the LEC. It's very clear that Rogue have shown they are willing to bump their players up to the main roster uh, if, if they prove themselves. But also the fact that, you know, if you do perform well at EU Masters, we've seen it time and time again, there's that opportunity to move in the LEC. This roster having won the Ultra Liga, which is one of our top uh, European regional leagues, you expect them to have a good run. And so yeah. huge weight on them. It's not just for the, the org, the roster, for uh, the fact that, you know, they won last year Masters of the reigning champions. Individually, the players want to be able to prove themselves. And this is their and, last chance potentially to do so if they do lose. And to re-emphasize as well, it's not only that they won the Ultra League, this is the team that won the last European Masters. Obviously, it's not the same lineup, but it's it's still a team that has these expectations, this this history, and you know, almost almost a position to hold. As we are into picks and bands, the pans are firing out as the Udi and the Nocturne have been taken away from the side of the Go Rogue. Over on the side of G2 Arctic, they have taken away the Seraphine for the moment. I yeah. expect to see a Hecarim really answered out here. You don't want to be trading off the Hecarim and not having an Udi to answer out with, so there it goes. It's kind of being like a team tries to get blue side Hecarim and then the response is the Udi, so if they're banning the Udi, you kind of have to deal with that uh, Hecarim. Tristana still hasn't been banned yet, so likely going to see that one. I expect that to be G2 Arctic red side ban coming through. And a Rogue just going to go with a Lilia. So thing out, thinning out the pool of junglers. Volibear still available. That could potentially come as a first pick. G2 Arctic, though, I expect the Tristana ban here. I don't want you to leave it open, especially not against Locker, who's so good on the champion. So they'll ban that. Do we see the Volibear coming out here? Or do a Rogue have a bit of a different plan in this situation? Actually, moment, just going to lock in the Jinx. Okay. I actually like that. We've seen a lot of emphasis on the Jinx. Uh, last three games, well, last two games, sorry. Hasn't been able to slide through, but... Over to G2 Arctic now. What is going to be the answer to the Jinx? The Kaiser is still open. The Alistair is still open. So you could go for something like a strong, solid bot lane here. Or yeah, you could just pick I, yourself I up a top laner in the Renekton. And Corda gets the Nidalee. That is a strong combo to play through the top side. I think it kind of puts pressure on Simnivac. There's limited options you can pick that are going to survive against that. But I'm a little bit concerned because picking the Jinx already... You know, I feel like G2 Arctic want to be able to shut that down. And with the composition, you're kind of leaning already towards the top side of the map. But we'll see. It does obviously give them windows. If they do find a lead on the top side, they can translate that down. But a go rogue. I mean, Volley Bear makes complete sense here with all the jungle bands coming through. And then they can pick up. Yeah, I mean, Rel makes great sense here as well. Just to be able to provide that peel for the Jinx and also follow up on the Volley Bears engage. A go rogue should be pretty happy with their first three picks. And G2 Arctic... I think you go, yeah, you go for something that can answer the rel before the bans come through. It does mean AD carry priority drops a bit, but realistically, there's still so many open available. 
in the current meta so many ad carries are viable i don't think you're too concerned about leaving that to the second rotation i interestingly enough what we see from g2 is they're kind of looking to probably play a little bit through the top side and it's more solo laney um i've learned from you i've spent enough time with you to know that nidalee renekton is one of the worst tower diving duos and worse as in worse to be on the receiving end of that dive it is not pleasant uh while we go rogue it feels like a little bit more traditional here they've got a solid front line in the rail and the volley bear jinx to play back line when you've got that extended range from the rocket and the aoe nice team fighting already locked in and g2 arctic actually looking to deny some of that team fighting capabilities they've taken away the oriana and that syndra don't want to give over that mid lane prio while a go rogue ban away the aphelios and the callista as their bans here but this I does still leave things like kaiser open a zaya I kind of feel like you might expect AD Carry to come here as a response because they know what they're dealing with. I mean, they, there's obviously they can pick a priority mids here, but the fact they're banning Orion and Syndra, either they're going to pick something like a Kali here and they don't want to deal with those prior mids, or they're going to leave it to counter pick and just pick the AD Carry here. So it looks like with the Ash coming out, something that can kind of match Jinx's range and a bit of the shoving power, they're going to leave that mid lane for counter pick for Frescovis so he can potentially take something like the Akali in a good matchup. A Go Rogue, uh, obviously. They need a top player that can potentially deal with this pressure. Something like a Scion maybe is something that you can play that kind of does okay into sort of dive scenarios. It's not obviously amazing, but in terms of weak side is strong. And then for a go rogue, I really like the Lucian. Um, it does kind of mean that you need some AP in the top side. And we're opting to go for the Karma here. Assuming it is Lucian made Karma top. Uh, obviously Karma can be vulnerable to dives to an extent, but obviously has the, the ult, the Mantra W, which can heal yourself, has the shielding. Tons of scaling on this composition with two AD carries in the back line. And G2 Arctic can kind of just round things out with the mid laner here. Something that can answer Lucian's pressure. That'd be hypey. That yeah. is hypey. Looks they like are going to lock in the Aurelia for Fresco A. So this is a bit of a skill check in the mid lane. The gauntlet has very much been thrown down by G2 Arctic. I do worry though. For G2 Arctic in the sense that they don't really have much engage. You obviously have the Ash Arrow, and it's fairly non-committal, so you can fire it out, miss, and step away. But Rogue, if they want to go, they're going to go. You're going to get sped up by the shield. Volibear is going to come hurling at you, and so is Rel. And at that point, the team fighting does get pretty rough. I think they might be swapping. I think they might put the Aurelia top and then the, the Renekton, Renekton mid. mid. I think it makes sense, because if you punish Solution, if he falls behind, the game really starts to fall apart for a go rogue. So, you know, you have an extended top lane that Aurelia can benefit from. You can dash the minions, you can easily get on top of the Karma. It's not going to be fun for her. Even as a ranged champion, Aurelia can be difficult. It's why we saw her being picked into Gnar, because she always has that threat to get on top of you. And the mid lane, you know, you stun Lucian, it doesn't matter how mobile he is, he's going to get hit by that spear as long as uh, the Nidalee's in range. And yeah. I kind of respect it. There's a lot of volatility in these compositions. I feel like the scaling edge is in, in the favor of uh, a go rogue on this one. Uh, just on the fact that obviously they have that karma syncing up with the, the jinx. But the early game is going to be a difficult one to navigate for the side of a go rogue. Well, we're on to the rift for our sixth game here. The Group B Bonanza. Doesn't necessarily mean Group B's over yet, though. Because remember, if a Go Rogue win, they have to play a tiebreaker versus Sup Up after this game to decide who is second in the group. If G2 win, they walk away with their pride intact somewhat. And they do knock out Rogue with them. I'm curious to see how Oscar is going to do on this Aurelia pick. Um, obviously playing weak side in that last game. I say weak side, playing Scion in that last game. So just playing the front line for the team. And, you know, we did sing some praises about him. He had a pretty, he had the highest level at one point in the game. And obviously, you know, on the Scion, you're not going to carry. You are going to do a good job as a front liner, but you're not going to carry. This time, it feels like the reins have been handed over to their top laner. Absolutely. It's not a fun lane to be in. All in all, playing against a Karma top for most Mali champions isn't fun. But there's windows and... Really comes down to simply back playing it well and not overstepping his grounds. Uh, expect to be watching Caldo in particular in this game and seeing what you can do on the Nidalee. A lot of priority on this. The fact they first rotated not just the Nidalee, but the Renekton to sort of uh, complement it means they are putting a lot of pressure on their jungler to get things rolling in the boss side. Ash Thresh, pretty strong level one. They may be looking for something here. Got that volley leveled up, so the hook's pretty easy to land. Or the flay, that's what we're going to start with. 
Riker jumps in as the Ignite's been thrown onto Lucker just to poke him out a little bit more. Super just trading auto attacks with the Ignite thrown down. Doesn't mean Lucker will lose out on that one. Watch on yeah. was ignited by Pryker, but he has the extra pots to deal with and Lucker now out of pots. As Oscar in, charges up the passive and just jumps into Simni back space for a couple of autos. And actually winning this trade though with the minions coming in, so... Does have a lot of sustain, thanks to the Corrupting Potion and the Biscuits coming in, but uh, not on really the winning end of that one. I will say I like, that early, as he dashes. I like that early aggression coming out from the bot lane. I think as well a big thing that put it in their favor is Perka has uh, Aftershock and Wakon has uh, Guardian. And Guardian, even early, the shield is so big. It just makes it so hard to win those initial trades. And giving themselves some extra pressure, I like that they m look to match the, the Jinx, who obviously has that early shoving potential thanks to the Rockets. And Ash is a champion who can hold up to that. And already, Lucker down pretty heavily in farm. As you started your point about the bot lane, he'd had zero CS. Down a level. The pressure is mounting already. Rox is in the area, though, so they do have to be a little bit careful of the Volley Bear coming in, although there is a ward in that tri brush. Looks to go the long way around. As a Coldo also in the area, so it's not like it's entirely dangerous for G2, as a Coldo. So this is we'll kind of spot out uh, his jungle counterpart here. Yeah, this is kind of a battle of mid priority against bot priority. Um, Lucian is a little bit closer now, and with the scuttle crab moving up towards top side, Calder just has to accept you're not getting that scuttle. So a go rogue, despite their bot being in a little bit of a precarious position, they managed to push the wave out a bit, and critically that mid priority ends up securing a scuttle crab for Lorak. So putting their jungle in a comfortable stuff apart, uh, spot and he will move up towards that top side where there's another scuttle should just be able to pick that one up so really solid start for a go rogue you can see coldo not really much to do on the map your scuttles are gone you can look for a gank which they are fishing for here Ooh, oh threaded the needle but the reset had come through and now Riker could look to come crashing down onto super and watch on super a little bit low on mana. Doesn't really want to have I, to burn his summoner spells. I think that's why Wakon didn't go for the engage there and the flay after, because you kind of want to save the flay to disengage the Rel. And in that 2v2 can be a little bit uh, of an awkward one, especially as actually Perka has a shorter cooldown ignite. So that's up and available now as Wakon's waiting for a little bit longer for that summoner. So it could have trouble in that 2v2 if they went for one right now. I'm noticing a large wave has been crashed into Oscar in, in the top lane, but once he's collected this wave, which an Aurelia has a very easy time doing, we'll have a pretty significant CS lead over Simni back. I say that, and it's actually only four minions, but he's got enough wave crashing in, so slowly building up a bit of a lead. Wave looked yeah. a lot bigger in my head. Gotta count those minions, Jake. I can't count, you know that. Yeah. Well, There's fortunately, there. it does it for you. You have the numbers coming in. Not very hard to CS really in all honesty. I think of all the champions pretty easy. Actually seeing a bit of a tank build coming out from 70 back. I think this is the right call. You're playing into a composition that's very squishy with high burst potential. So you're in a comfortable spot to go for this bulkier build and just withstand pressure. You have oh. the grasp to help you heal. But oh, engage comes in. Yeah, they're just gonna jump onto Crazy. You have to flash away. The Sky Split has been used as Fresco away looking for that final little bit of damage, but he can't make it connect. Crest does burn both his summoner spells. So is Frescoe, so now the junglers are just helping the shove in the mid lane. Yeah, two summoners for one, so I think uh, ultimately a go rogue pretty happy with that one. Lorax coming in, kind of clutching it in Crest with a, a clutch flash to avoid getting blown up. You can see the thought process there. You land the stun, you land the spear, but the damage just isn't quite there to 100 to 0 the Lucian right now. Watch on actually helping Koldo steal away this chicken camp. As uh, Lorax is still waiting in the wings on this bottom side. On this mid lane, sorry, as uh, Luck has also rotated in. Coldo has to be very careful as Rox was jumping in forwards as Frescoe jumps in for the stun, but there's four members on him, and it's first blood to Lucker, who's now excited, lands himself the zap. And Rox puts the Sky Splitter just to zone him from heading that way into the jungle. Yeah, just staying a little bit too long after the play. If you're not moving your allies up, you have to expect the other team is doing the same. G Chocti could have just disengaged, backed away, but a bit greedy from Frescoe. And I think that's the thing with Renekton is you're getting harassed consistently by this Lucian. You want to try and find those windows to engage and trade and return. But realistically, oftentimes, if Lucian's giving you that window, it's because he's baiting. 
And that does afford first blood over to Lucker. Simple as that. Yeah, I mean, of all the people to get it, I think that's a pretty good target all in all. So, uh, six has been hit by Coldo. It's uh, not as impactful as someone like Lorox, so you can make pretty easy tower dives after using his ultimate. Except what Alternator lane? picked up, though, for the, in the end. We were talking, well, I was talking about how, you know, they didn't quite have the damage to 100 resolution. That can make the difference. Pretty strong component item here, just in terms of the raw burst. And their pick will get out of a sticky situation. Nearly level 6 in the bot lane for G2 Arctic. And that's going to be a big one as well. Ash obviously having that engage potential. And so far, this lane matchup has been pretty in favor of G2 Arctic, able to apply pressure and sort of whittle away that tower already getting a play. Yeah, and remember, Lucker hasn't actually spent that first blood gold yet. So, while sitting on that gold, and maybe a little bit of bonus experience there, isn't actually able to utilize it too much. Is uh, watching, looking for the hook, not going to find it. Super, not quite. I think it's another wave before he hits six. So, a little bit more time for a go rogue to play this a little bit more aggressively as uh, Frescawi. Potentially looking to jump onto Crest, but Coldo's in the area as well. Gets the lock down as the minions are going to block from any spear potential. The Sky Split has been used and Pryker's coming in. He's got himself the Attract and Repel stun to lock him down as now Watchen has to flash away as the Zap will ping him in the bum as he walks out of this one. Do you see the Ash coming in the flag? Level 6 now achieved by Super. Yeah, it's going to be Pryker on receiving end of that arrow as the Chompers have been laid down, but Coldo secures himself the kill. Yeah, so I'll play coming out and super coming in just at the critical time with that level six. Look a little behind. He's the one often roaming first and so has missed out on some of that XP. And with that, Coldo going to be rewarded with a red buff. Could actually just translate this into a dragon straight off the back of it. Although I think Lorax expects that. So he's going to be staying in the vicinity, clearing the Krogs. So probably just going to go for the resets here. Don't want to risk it. I'm going to try and maintain this momentum. You can see Coldo moving in for the Raptors as well. So acquiring quite a bit, a bit off the back of this play on top of that one kill. And yeah, really nice arrow and good target selection. Cleanse and flash on Lucker. Could have had a flash coming out from Pirka there, but uh, wasn't ready for the arrow to come in. Good juice. And now Caldo starting to pull a little bit ahead in the jungle matchup, just thanks to clearing up some of those boss side camps. Has a full set of camps to clear through zone jungle so should be able to get a bit more momentum and bear in mind this was off the back of lorax getting those first two scuttles he's just picked up another one there I see what he did there rocks on the volley bear um you can see the vision as well currently in the river area not overly dominating but it's there as a uh, watch on actually coming up towards his top line and zim in fact able to dump away from the flawless duet but he's tanky not going to be able to survive this for too much longer once that q comes back off cooldown or a hook lands, Oscarin will find himself the kill. Yeah, beautiful patience there from Wakon to just move up to him, not be in the flay, not be in the hook until you could see Simi Vak was trying to move back and forth to, to duke and dodge, but this is a concern. You're playing in such a long lane, it's very easy to just walk on top of you and find that play. And now a go rogue are looking to try and collapse on bot lane, looking to threaten that dragon. That's great, but on the top side of the map, you can see that Koldo is just gonna start up the Herald, I would think at this point although actually he seems to be no. heading down towards mid i thought that was the play pick up the herald translate that into a tower he does seem to be hesitating and actually a little bit more focused on the jungle camps instead of the the neutral objective that's to me a, a, a bit of a bit of a misstep when you've got the mid lane shove you've got the top lane shove although they may just be looking to jump into simnivac's face or to strip away more of this blue side jungle i mean it is building up a big lead in terms of the jungle but I feel like having that Herald could just secure the tower quite easily in the top lane. Top lane now down to two and a half plates, but Icon is able to move down towards the boss side and cover, and all in all, Koldo's just going to start the Herald a little bit later. Still doesn't feel like Lorax will be in position to contest this one. Frescoe does need to be a little bit careful, though. There was a ping going down, so they do know Lorax is in the areas. Watch on. Just clearing out some of this vision. He gets jumped onto. The Magnus Storm has been used. As they're going to use the slow. Ulti's burnt and watch on will lose his life. The Super Mega Death Rocket. It's a little bit too slow to secure the kill for Lucker as Crest gets in. Plates will get picked up here on the bottom side of the map. But with the Rift Herald in the pocket of Coldo now. And Skyrim able to shove in the wave. And not really too much Simi Vat can do about this. And no camps for him to go farm. Thanks to Coldo earlier. This will be first turret blood 
and plates for Oscarin. Yeah, and I mean, you've already got a massive chest lead in the top lane. Already got your first time completed. This Aurelia is super strong. It's oh, about so to get even stronger. That I'd be pretty so concerned. Low gold as well. I'd be pretty concerned if I was a go rogue. Close to a 3,000 gold lead. And this Aurelia is monstrous. And I mean, I'm looking at your composition. You've got 280 carries. Aurelia will absolutely love to just run them over. I mean, if you have a look at the items, Blade the Rune King on Oscar and Night Harvester on Coldo versus um, the Mirror for Simrivac, a Bramble Vest, and then Barmy Cinder and Cooldown Boots for Lorox. So the top side is heavily favored towards G2 Arctic as uh, Oscar Arun. Not going to be able to take this one away. He might be feeling himself a little bit, but now he's getting chased down. Hasn't actually got anybody about. Time War Tolerance is going to get easy. Throws out the ultimate. Actually just jumps in one versus three, but he will not survive. Orox will take him down. Yeah, a little bit of questionable play. <laughs> I'll be honest. We're just singing the praises of the Aurelia and how fed uh, Skrinin is, but oversteps quite a bit there and gets caught out. A go rogue. Happy to punish that one. So seeing a massive jungle CS discrepancy. Bear in mind, Coldo had three junglers banned away by a go rogue. Their first three bans all junglers and still able to just have a massive difference in terms of farm. And obviously, that's part in due to the matchup, but I feel like Coldo has done well to secure these advantages, and he's still looking for them. Lorex, very much in trouble here. I think you're dead. Yeah, teleport's been used by Scarra and Coldo almost lands the spear, as it might just be the execute here for Lorex. I think oh, no, Coldo I don't think sure he's going to be able to get there. away. Flash. Yeah, flash auto is on. Did burn the flash of Coldo. So, I mean, if you're going to take something... You do at least get that. It's a consolation prize, you know? One of those copper linings coming in again. <laughs> Tin lining, maybe. <laughs> do you see Oscar and pick up that second tower in the top lane? And Karma pick feels like it's not really doing too much so far. Not really holding its own in terms of the matchup. And I think the Aurelia pick really favoring to Arctic. A big factor was they uh -oh. felt like they were playing into the Renekton. Oh. Uh oh, uh oh! Crest is caught by the flawless duet! Oscar just takes him down like nothing! Just absolutely annihilates him. The Night Harvester damage coming in. The Aurelia there for the cleanup. Teach Arctic looking good in this game. And bear in mind, there's no stakes for them. They are just playing upset here. But they want to prove themselves. And right now they are. Where was this G2 earlier? Last week is, is where I'm looking. <laughs> Unfortunately, the tower is going to go down. Oscarion will take a zap for a slower. Zorox actually pops the ultimate. And Oscarion pretty low. The Super Mega Death Rock has been thrown out. But watch on's coming in. As the Magnus Storm will connect onto Fresco A. They bring Super in. And now GT may be looking for a bit of a turnaround. Kodo stealing away some crabs. As Oscarion's still a little bit low. There is a Honey Fruit to heal up. As everyone gets sped up by the Karma. The slows are coming in from Super, and Lorox is taking a lot of damage as the spear connects from Coldo. Here's the Ash Arrow, here's the Ignite. They've got everything to work with, and Oscarin might be able to reset on the minions as the play will catch on shot onto Pryker. Oscarin goes for the Q, goes for the reset, the flash, the forward, catches with the Vanguard's Edge. Doesn't get the flawless duet, but the minions will taxi him back out of this one. Dodging away on that zap. And G2 just flip it back around. You've got to be so careful. You're playing into a thresh. She was great disengage. The lantern can peel away. And then critically, the Nidalee walking forwards where you don't have vision. Face checking spears isn't going to end well. And G2 Arctic quickly answer back on that initial play. Right now, I mean, the Aurelia, look at those items. Look at the comparison between top laners. Simnivac has a Bandle Glass Mirror and a Bramble Vest against a full Shield Bow and a Blade of the Rune King. It's not even close. It's not even... Mon like... The difference is just absolutely massive. And I feel like right now, the sustain alone from this Aurelia is so hard for a Goro to, to deal with. I want to pick your brain a little bit about this because uh, we've seen a rise in the shield bow over things like Triforce. But I'll pick your brain about that in a minute because let's have a look at the fight once again. Yeah, so I mean, face checking in areas don't have vision. Spear connects and then it's a great arrow coming out from Super to re-engage. And this flay... This is why you want the Thresh into the Rel. Does so good at not only disengaging, but also stopping them from getting away. And Oscar in very aggressive play here, but has the minions to get out, has a Lantern as well. And it's picks like Nidalee and uh, Aurelia who really benefit from having a Thresh where you can dive in uh -oh. and get out. But once more, I think that kill. might be one dead Lucian. The culling is in vain. As Watch On secures himself his first kill of the game. But yeah, going back to your point about the Aurelia and the Shield Bow, I think because Essence Reaver was such a good item to provide that Sheen effect, and also just the fact that, like, Shield Bow, it's similar to Gangplank, just that the, the Shield passive is so powerful, the stats are so good. 
even if it's like you wouldn't typically want crit on a rally you're not going to complain if you jump on someone and crit them you're not going to be too concerned about that and the other stats it gives are just so effective triforce even with the changes isn't too heavily prioritized as a mythic it's kind of dropped in priority from when we saw it as just a completed item and yeah i mean too much vision here caught recalling spear actually whips <laughs> there somehow but Sad uh, spear. still gonna go down nice little move from on just to hit the blast cone there pop him straight back into the welcoming hands of himself because he got the kill there was a quick toggle on gold just before that while we were talking about the shield bow. It's a big, big league topside. It is a scary league topside. And remember, if a Go Rogue lose this, that's it. That is the defending champs knocked out of the European Masters by G2 Arctic, right who are also knocked out themselves as Blue Buff is going to get taken by the rocks, has to smite it. And that is a denial from Cress. Four oh. turrets to none. 6,000 gold lead. Whew. I don't know about you, Jake, but if this if this was my last game to sort of keep my hopes live, I wouldn't be feeling about this state right now. They still have the likes of that karma, can provide that shielding later on. They still have a Jinx, but it is tentative. Oh. Doesn't connect on the They almost locker. didn't have a Jinx. <laughs> Does have a cleanse, though, so might be not to dodge away from that one. But you can see, G-Jartic are constantly fishing, finding, trying to find any window they can in these situations. And Oscar in just in a side lane and Lorex is level nine. Three levels down on the Nidley right now. Three levels down on the Aurelia. Even lower level than Super. This Volley Bear isn't offering much at all. And you just don't have the damage to kill between the Karma and the, the Volley Bear. The damage isn't there to kill this Aurelia. So they're doing their best to hold onto this mid lane, but that is all they can do. There is no contest, there is only hold. Hope that you can buy time, but this Jinx can kind of get to the point where with the Moonstone and the flo Staff of Flowing Water, Bucket can take over the game. But we're 18 minutes in and G2 looking to pick themselves up their second Rift Herald of this game. Not too much contest. Should be able to transition that into this Tier 2 Tower mid quite easily with the health is that should just be enough to finish off. You can see... A go rogue are trying to group up to try and force plays, but it's so difficult because realistically the Lantern is always there for super in the mid lane and oscar and is playing so respectfully you can see the vision got moved up towards the top side so this bot side jungle is completely swept the vision for the side of g2 arctic there's no support there's no wards that are going to keep the aurelia safe so oscar and is playing extremely defensively as a result he's respecting that he's not pushing up and instead he's waiting for the waves to push and catch and to see members of a go rogue in the mid so now they throw it on the Herald. You can see a Go Rogue responding over. This is a window for Oscar Renin to push this wave in. And now the rest of the team can rotate to meet him. Really solid play coming out from G2 Arctic. Yeah, it clears out the wave. Got a big one to work with. And sure, there's a Sky Splitter. Sure, eats a Mantra. Or an Inner Flame, sorry, but he's fine. Yeah, really nice macro play there just to secure these two out of towers. Oftentimes, those are harder to break. Sometimes needing... Uh, the Herald obviously did use the Herald there, but often needed in the likes of the Baron to break those tier two towers, or three of them. But g don't haven't even picked it up yet and are looking really solid. Now with on the cards, the big concern with those tier two towers down is if the vision gets swept out, you have to think of towers as like a safe zone. So if your last standing mid lane tower is your closest safe, safe zone to Baron, you have such a long distance to travel through. And anytime you're walking through the area, you could be face checking into a Nidley Spear, into a Thresh Hook, into an Ash Arrow, into just, you know, an Aurelia. And it makes things really difficult. You can see a Go Rogue trying to push up and contest some vision. They are trying to look for a pick on a whack on here, but he is playing a bit respectfully. They're happy to give up this vision and push the waves in, but they will just move in, sweep it out. And that means the area in which a Go Rogue can play on the map is just so much smaller. So hard for them to do so as a. Uh... Procast used to crash down to get over the wall away from G2. They're now starting to light up this barren area with red wards and traps and all the goodies they can get. That's a beautiful ward, though, by a go rogue yep. just outside the pit that hasn't been spotted by the pink ward. And they know the baron's going on. They are going to get caught by a flawless duet and watch on. May look for a hook onto the volley bail, though. They will spot him out and he's going to use the box. 
Stun's gonna get used as a go rogue. This is their opportunity. Ulti is gonna get connected onto free by Scarrowin as the Magnet Storm has fired out. There's already been one kill. It's luckily just free firing away and completely untouched for the moment. Here comes Lorox. Is super going very, very low. Has to flash away from Lorox, but this is just G2 Arctic running through members. A triple kill onto Coldo as he is just chasing up a for the quadra, quadra kill. kill. Just absolutely rolling over them. G2 Arctic going huge in that fight. And you can see Luka was trying to get the autos in, looking to ramp up. But the team was just dying around him. No one was left to help form that team fight. G2 Arctic, 10,000 gold being about to pick up this Baron. They're looking great in that last game of EU Masters. Gonna get the Baron, they can take the Dragon, they can take whatever they want. They can go for the resets off the back of that Ace, off the Quadra kill onto Koldo. Let's have a look at it once again. Yeah, so initially the fight starts off and Oscar in, again, very respectful play here because he gets a massive ultimate but doesn't commit too heavily, doesn't want to get focused down, knows he's fairly squishy. But the re-engage comes in for Fresco Bay, they dive for it. Lucian instantly gone. And you can see in the boss side, Lucas starting to get autos off, but his team is just evaporating. They're all dead at this point. He's still full HP, he's still trying to get things rolling, but at this point you're 1v5, and as soon as the Renekton gets a stun, you're just completely gone. Koldo dashing and dipping around that fight like an expert, and just picking up so many kills at the back of that. 7 0 4 now on that Nidalee. The gold leads 11,000. G Traftic firmly in control. Five level lead, by the way, between junglers, just to add. It's really, really hard right now for G2. Sorry, for, for G, well, for GT to lose it. It's really, really hard it for is. a co to turn this around. Tough game to lose. I mean, Tough honestly, game to lose. Credit to Cole, though. The fact that he drew three jungle bands in the opener, first picks the Nidalee, and just has such a great game on it. Absolutely dominant so far. Now, I want to see how much damage one of these spears do, because it is going to chunk. I mean, here's the scary thing about this game. Is, uh, whoa! <laughs> that's, that's how much. There you go. As uh, Lorux is actually trying to use that maul, trying to catch out onto Koldo. Koldo able to jump away and use the passive movement speed from the bushes and the passives. Is, by the way, Ascarian's pushing topside. Someone needs to go deal with that Aurelia. No one wants to. No one wants to, in all honesty. I don't think anyone really has the gold or the kit to deal with that Aurelia right now. A go rook trying to group to look for a team fight, but the opening's just not being presented. G-Tragic playing this expertly. They're backing away. They're not giving windows for an engage. They're poking with spears and letting Oscar in and do his thing in the top lane. And now, now that it's grouped up again, a go rogue still don't feel comfortable to fight. Two inhibitors down. In just a mere seconds. Vickers looking. Yeah, they're going to use the Magnus Storm. He's popped, actually. But so much damage is coming out. The Asher is a little bit wide. Pryker able to get away. They get themselves the shutdown. And it's a kill, but they lost two inhibitors for one kill. It does kind of put a halt on Oscar Renin uh, pushing in the side lane and just the g Arctic push as a whole. There's only 35 seconds of Baron, so they will back off, clear the dragon, and, and, and move away. But Go Rogue, it was a good pick to find. It does mitigate the pressure, but again, still 11,000 gold behind. You've lost two inhibitors. You're in a very rough spot right now. You need, next time g Arctic push up, you need to be able to find another pick and force an instant team fight and win it because you're just getting whittled down at this point. The split pressure yeah. is too much. The Karma wants to be grouped, whereas the Aurelia is threatening in the side lanes. And the poke from Koldo is just oppressive. And the thing is, is if you're a go rogue now, you are one fight away from just losing. That is it. You are one fight win away from buying yourself time. It, it's going to take a lot of good fights and a lot of good kind of positional plays to be able to pull this game back. They're still yet to take a tower. We're 25 minutes in. The gold lead is 11,000. And G2 Arctic are closing in on this final tower, which isn't guarding the Nexus. And that's the thing. They've it's got... like one miracle fight buys you time, but you need several to have a chance in this game. And at this point, they are looking for it. Pick us fishing. jump in. There's the arrow, but here's everything getting thrown on. The Magnus Storm is connected. Luck is firing away. Does get caught out by the ulti. Frescoe jumps in. That's a big spear by Cold. The shutdown's there. Two members have already fallen. It's a double kill for Super. Simnivak's going to get taken out by Cold. Who finds himself his own double kill. Krez trying to get a little bit of additional damage in. The stopwatch is used, and Oscarin slides in forward. For Stuart dodged out. It's the ace for G2. And they're going to take the base to follow as well. They knock Rogue out of the European Masters with themselves. And this is Group B decided, G2 closing it with a win.
they definitely looked a lot better in week two and although they weren't able to make their dreams happen they crushed the dreams of a go rogue the reigning champions knocked out in group stages the number one seed for the ultra liga as well yeah. and the thing is on the back of this the other thing to note sup up now straight through out of groups and considering this was a, a team who went 0-6 last year masters a massive achievement so huge credit to them for pulling it back in the week two and getting that earlier win which secured them but a go rogue what happened i mean really it just felt like this whole week i mean it was i say week it's, been, it's one day this whole day <laughs> yeah. they've just kind of fallen apart the plate hasn't really been there and often it's been you know, teams up against them have been the instigators, have been the ones starting the fight, and we saw that so much in this one. g Arctic went for this aggressive composition, and they were able to dictate the pace of the game. Lorex consistently on the back foot in terms of farm, in terms of levels, and whenever these plays were starting to set up, set up a go a good group, and then g Arctic would find a pick, and they'd just be able to disengage at will. The fresh pick, really valuable here, but also just a priority in the lanes and the matchups working in favor of g Arctic as well. It... Ultimately felt like a go rig just didn't have any op options, didn't really feel like their comp allowed them to fight versus what G2 had put together. And it just it just got too quick. It fell apart too fast, too quick. And I mean Cola getting a quadra kill. Honestly, genuine surprise to me. I did I kind of was watching the bottom part of the fight and I didn't see him pick up the double kill, and then Cola just popped off. And honestly, an amazing game from him on the middle. And you said it in the cast as well. He got heavily banned and heavily prioritized in the um, in the picks and bans, and then he just had the confidence to pick this up and have a performance like this. Coldo, fantastic game for him, and unfortunately, it's it is a little too late. It, is, it isn't enough. It isn't. It isn't enough for them to make it out of the uh, out of the group stages. But you know, to get a win versus the former champions of the European Masters, the current champions holding their title and with this a go rogue won't have the ability to contest and hold their own title there'll be a brand new team winning it this time around the go rogue are out of the group stages and out of the tournament unfortunately for them and you know it's a real kind of real bruise on the pride for the uh for the ultra league in general as you can see the standings right now are two teams making it out of the group b is going to be misfits premier who genuinely look like a terrifying team and i'm really excited to see who's going to be able to challenge them if anyone and then sup up from the balkans who caught everyone off guard i think it's fair to say they really caught everyone off guard and they had a rough start to the week to the day as well going zero two then finding a very crucial win versus the go rogue and that was what kept their hopes alive and that is how they made it out of the group stages absolutely and credit to them they stepped up when they needed a go rogue unfortunately didn't i think the thing you know the the other story here is g2 arctic because we saw great performance from them in plans what happened domestically for them as well is they were looking really strong in the regular season and then kind of flopped when it came to playoffs a lot of people including the spanish casters expected them to be, go further and i think the big thing for this roster is inconsistency at their best this lineup would have made it out of groups if we could have had a full two weeks with them playing their best they would have made out of groups. They probably could have made a good run. But we don't always get that best. Their week one was not good. And in comparison, sure, they didn't beat Misfits Premier, but that is a hard task. But they looked better than a go rogue. And even in the matchup against Sup Up, able to dispatch them. So it's disappointing for them, obviously. But I think they kind of proved uh, in this week and in play-ins that they are a formidable team. With a go rogue, I it's just a struggle. I feel like they couldn't keep up to the pace some of the other teams set. And it felt like yeah. particularly... You know, a lot of teams adopted when Misfits, Misfits Premier were very proactive on the map, very aggressive early. Teams were adopting that style and they just couldn't keep pace with it ultimately. It's disappointing, obviously, for the players and for the org, but uh, Sup Up had their miracle run. 0-6. And I think this is the, the crazy thing, is we went from the best performance last year, Masters, a go rogue, and one of the worst in Sup Up going 0-6. And it's kind of flipped now. It's just with, flipped with around, yeah. Sup Up going through and a go rogue getting knocked out in groups. Well, that is Group B. The Bonanza has been settled with our two teams going out, but we will be looking at tomorrow's matches. This is going to be Group... Oh, my Lord. How am I this silly? I forgot to write it down. Hey, thank you. It's amazing. It's Group A. Uh, so it got starting off with Big versus a North Sis and North Sis team who honestly caught a few people off guard. Maybe they can do it again. Then we got Kick versus Makers and North Sis versus Kick. Big versus Makers. Makers versus a North Sis and Kick versus Big to close the day out. A lot of action over in Group A. Really excited to see it. 
Orcs, I'm going to ask you some predictions. Who's making out of Group A tomorrow? I would say... You know, I'm going to go wild. I'm going to say kick and make and makers. Oh, okay, cool. Interesting. Well, that is going to be Group A's action. We'll see you tomorrow for that one. Make sure you join us, same time, same place. But for that, for us and everyone here, we are all done now with Group B. Thank you very much for watching, guys. We will see you for more European Masters action tomorrow. See you then. See ya.